Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. What an opportunity, what a blessing to have this beautiful day. It all is going to be beautiful if you decide to. Do you know that it is within your hands, it's within your heart that you decide what happens? This is what we are even learning. The once you acknowledge something with your heart, confess with your mouth, something happens. So your heart is a very, very important component. It's a vital component into uh, the salvation, experiencing salvation. You can choose to see what God is seeing today and agree with him and you begin to see exactly what your heart has come to believe. It's so important and it's key. I pray that you'll be illuminated as we share this gospel, this message of all time. Romans chapter 10 verse 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart the God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. How do you experience salvation? By acknowledging that means believing with your heart and confessing with your mouth. And the idea is the mentality, you see, get to know something and agree and agree. See, don't reject it and expect to experience what you reject. That is why whatever you reject, it is not going to work in your life because you don't give it uh, value. You don't want to acknowledge it. So it is not going to work in your life. If you want something to work in your life, uh, uh, receive it at home in your heart. Once you do that, it will work. Romans chapter 8, chapter 10, verse, verse 9. Paul is teaching us something very important. Thou, if that, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So Paul elaborates on the mouth and mentality again. And he's talking about the, the believer's mentality and the mouth being the vital connectors to his experience of salvation. So salvation can be experienced here now by believing with your heart and confessing with your mouth. So by further teaching on confession and believing, Paul is stressing the simplicity in receiving righteousness by faith as opposed to the bondage of trying to produce your own righteousness by means of the law. You cannot receive, you cannot experience salvation by trying to obey or producing righteousness by yourself. You can only access to it by believing with your heart and agree, confess with your mouth. You see, this word confess, you know, this word confess is a Greek word homology. And it means to assent. It means to express agreement by saying the exact thing. So in other words, you are saying the same thing. You know, at times you might not even uh, speak verbally because here somebody might ask himself, how well, about the person who cannot speak? Well, a person doesn't need to necessarily verbally speak because, you know, some people can articulate words which they do not believe in their hearts. We are talking about agreeing, agreement, the agreement with God after acknowledging, after understanding. After understanding. So the message has to come to you first and then all oh, listen to it and you are convinced and get convinced because of that message you see so it is to say exact thing to say the same thing with god glory to god and you know the confession is uh, a judicial term that indicates the binding 
and public declaration which settles a relationship with legal force. It's actually to acknowledge belief and trust in the person through verbal affirmation. So you use acknowledging or trust or belief through verbal affirmation. In this case, confession, that is what it means. When you acknowledge a person, when you speak good of a person, you agree with the person and you say it. See, that is confession normally. So, and there is also oral confession declares. <laughs> See, oral confession, the oral confession declares, confirms, and seals the belief that is in the heart. You know, that is exactly the secret, that it comes from your heart and then you confess it. What fills the, the heart is what comes out of the, on the, of the mouth. This is exactly what happens. When somebody is angry, will at times speak in a very negative way. When somebody is uh, happy, they will speak uh, very positively. See, most times it's what is inside will come out. So authentic faith, which is in the heart, always breaks its silence to announce itself. Whatever you believe in your heart eventually will come out. Faith is that conviction, is that acknowledging, is that ability to see what God is seeing. So when you see yourself in Him or you see what is done, that's already faith because you cannot talk about faith without acknowledging, without knowing, without understanding. And faith always precedes confession and not the other way around. So what you are confessing, what you're speaking forth is already in your heart. You're not trying to speak something so that it may happen. You already know that it's really in your heart and so you're speaking out. See, this is how it works. This is the formula. So the statement, the Lord Jesus, because they are telling us that we don't just confess anything. We confess the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart. So we confess the Lord Jesus. Why this term, the Lord Jesus? Why is it important to confess the name, the, the, the statement, the Lord Jesus is used here? This is important. Paul use, uses it. And uh, also the early church. Uh, used this name, they understood um, the power, the importance of the public profession of the Lordship of Jesus. This statement reveals the Christological, the ex, the experience, the message, Christology, the, the message about Christ that Paul preached. And those who had Paul, they upheld it very dearly way back from the first century. You see, first this confession, Jesus is Lord, the word Jesus is Lord, when you talk about Jesus is Lord, was a public expression of the belief that God raised him from the dead. This public confession, this belief, the Lordship of Jesus, see, was the public expression of the belief that God raised him from the dead. See, because if you say Jesus is Lord now, you mean that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. So you are actually agreeing with God that he's been raised from the dead. So the affirmation of the Lordship of Jesus is one we can track back to the earliest days of Christian reflection on Christ's resurrection. So in Christ's resurrection, we see we have many verses that talks about Christ's resurrection. So it was used to confess, to agree, to tell it to the world publicly that Jesus Christ came back from the dead, glory to God. So the confession of the Lordship of Jesus Christ was to let the world know 
that he rose from the dead. And that was very, very important in terms of uh, revealing or preaching the message of the gospel. You see, secondly, the Greek word translated as Lord is curious. Curious denoted an asserted or acknowledged dominance and right of disposal or superior over inferior. See, when you call somebody Lord, you mean he is superior. You see, it's, it's a normal word. You know that word. When you say Lord, you mean that person is superior. And he's superior to who? To the one who's called him Lord, who's calling him Lord. So, and he used to be, it was used, uh, whether simply a master of a slave, king of a subject, or by extension, God of a worshiper, the confession the one is Lord expressed an attitude of, of submission and also a sense of belonging or devotion to the one that is named so. So, you see, it, it used to be used in baptism to indicate uh, a transfer of allegiance. So that means whatever used to be, whatever used to acknowledge as Lord or had power over you now, you are saying it does not have power over you anymore. You have changed your allegiance are on someone else. Glory to God. So it is acknowledging. That means you are acknowledging that he owns you. You are acknowledging the ownership, the change of ownership. Where do you belong? Whose are you? The confession of Jesus as Lord, it meant also that you are committed to his service. You belong to him. He's your Lord. He's your master. You're declaring an ownership. You're saying you belong to him. You're saying he has authority and power over you. And whatever you used to have of power and authority over you is no longer active. It's no longer your Lord. Something has changed. You are active agree you agree with the lord you agree with that lordship and it changes everything about you so in this uh, statement also it signifies that jesus is the lord or when somebody says Jesus is the Lord, it was again a way that the Jews used to call God. You know, in the first century, the use of the Lord, it was connected to the rabbinical substitution of the Hebrew tetragrammation Yahweh. So Paul, in insisting of the confession, Jesus Lord, Jesus is Lord, is, far, is referring to Jesus as Yahweh. So that means if the Jews used to say that God is Yahweh, Paul is saying this is who Jesus is. It's a, it's a huge, huge, a very powerful word when someone uses it. But most importantly, when you acknowledge what it means. Shalom, shalom.